if you look at the world, you will see that no one has ever forsaken worldly riches because of Christ. None really, for God wants a clean heart to dwell in. Jesus hadn't a penny with him, otherwise he would have built a mansion for himself. Then people would have liked to be called by that name Jesus. I repeat, many people would have liked to be called by that name Jesus. Ever since Jesus and the apostles died, have you seen anyone who is willing to serve God? God does not want a heart that thinks of earthly riches like money, houses, dresses, etc. That is why you see people going up the hill to look for Christ or down the valley to look for him, but have not seen him. It is a very difficult task to serve God. That was why Jesus asked Peter if he loved him more than every other thing. He saw that Peter had forsaken all earthly riches, his wife, children, houses, and property to follow him. For this, reason, for this reason, he was able to hand over the key to him. The position of Jesus is now an honorable one. I have been telling you that it will be very difficult for Europeans to follow Christ because man wanted to follow Jesus to wheresoever he would go, but he said, unto him, foxes of old and birds of the air of nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That is why no one can fight to be the Son of God, because there is no earthly glory in being one. Rather, you have to refrain from all sins before you can be one with God. First lesson. St. John chapter 14 verse 30 Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and had nothing in me. If you happen to go to Jerusalem now, you will not see even a hut belonging to Jesus. He hadn't a box for his dresses, nor anything of the sort. If the people who had been serving God were to be rich, by now, people should have rushed to do the work so as to enrich themselves. Jesus had nothing in him except God, and God had no other child. So, if one claims to be a child of God, now ask him if he had refrained from all worldly things, because Jesus, who is the Son of God, did so. That was why when some of his disciples reported to him that Judas Iscariot was their treasurer, that Judas Iscariot, who was their treasurer, was lavishing their money on women and building mansions, he did not bother. So, brethren, to be the child of God means much. Second lesson, Luke chapter 5, verse 11. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Brethren, you can now see that James, John, Peter, and Andrew forsook everything before following Christ. How can you then go to be a follower, a follower of Christ to get something when you know that anybody who follows Christ was forsaking everything he has. If Peter had not forsaken everything, he couldn't have been able to carry on the work of God. You will bear me out that he forsook 
all that he had, even his wife, family and house, and even the worldly pleasures. That was why the work of God progressed. Paul and all the rest of the apostles were under him. It was after Peter's death that the work of God started to deteriorate and gradually die completely. So brethren, you cannot enter that kingdom with riches but by self-sacrifice and self-denial. Today you see people claiming to be followers of Christ but still go after women, tell lies, always looking for good and nourishing food etc. Peter was the only person who forsook everything because of Christ. That was why the key was handed over to him by Christ to take charge of his flock. After the rest of the followers of Jesus had left him, he asked the remaining twelve whether they too would leave him. In reply, Peter said that they had nowhere to go because they had forsaken everything, including their wives, children, parents, homes, etc., to follow him. Paul was a very rich lawyer, but when he was called, he forsook all these earthly things. Peter was then the overall leader for Christ handed everything to him before he died and after his death he came back in spirit to live with him. Peter had nothing except Christ. That was why he told that lame man that sat near the beautiful gate who asked him for arms that silver and gold he had none but gave him the name of Christ which he had with him, which made the man to walk. Which of the disciples that followed Christ was rich? None of them, because they did not believe in earthly riches. Golden text, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Brethren, who among you here wants to be as poor as Jesus? John the Baptist came and did not eat nor drink, and did not put on any cloth, and did not marry too. That was why he was able to fulfill his mission. So, brethren, if you really want to be real followers of Christ, you have to sell all you have before you can do this. It is our place to respect anyone who is a true follower of God, for he cannot do this without forsaking all riches. Today, you all are eating and drinking and enjoying yourselves without caring to remember him. So brethren, let us think over this very seriously. Think of the amount of love God has for us by sending his only begotten son to come and suffer and die to redeem us. Nobody can do this for the power is from above. So, anyone who rejoices in the child now is given the light, is given the right to be the child of God. You cannot attain this position by fasting for 40 days or by going about barefoot or with only one dress. So, brethren, let this generation rejoice and respect the one sent and don't go back and don't go to him for anything for after forsaking all earthly riches because of you 
he will have nothing also to give you except Christ which he has given you. Divine instructions for the followers of God in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Any person who does not refrain from all the sins enumerated below cannot be a good Christian. These sins are fornication, adultery, stealing, lying, deceit, envying, cunning, anger, quarreling, fighting, gossiping, idolatry, witchcraft, taking of drinks, smoking, snuffing, heresy, lasciviousness, sedition, unrighteousness, mischief, jealousy, vindictiveness, pomposity, division, laziness, covetousness, argument, flippancy, pride, fraud, bullying, murder, insult, rancor, vain thinking, aggravation, whispering, cursing, herbalism, traditional plays, worldly dance, worldly scene, swearing by blood, oath, inordinated lust, and evil concupiscence both native and English treatments, occult science, burning of incense, Ogboni society, playing of band or drums, weeping, frowning of face, sighing, bribery or being bribed, selfishness, flogging of children, wife, servant, disobedience and lamenting. Wearing of gold, pearl, earrings, necklace, finger ring, boring of ear, etc. Offering people drinks, keeping company with fornicators, mourning, keeping company with fornicators, mourning, keeping mourning house, secret societies such as Rosicution, Lodge, Abu, Ekpi, Ekpo, and others. Court action, backbiting, sacrifice, presence in worldly society, soothsaying, or worldly gathering, eating meat of strangled beasts, or meat of animals which die of themselves, and such like ungodly manners. Any person who refrains from the sins enumerated above and complies with the instructions given in the New Testament, such a fellow will be fit to be Christ's disciple and will become a true student of the universal spiritual school of practical Christianity. The virtue of a good Christian in the brotherhood of the cross and star love, truth, patience, faith, hope, joy, temperance, peace, righteousness, generosity, complacency, meekness, truthfulness, and rightful action. Be a husband of one wife or a wife of one husband or you remain a virgin. Mercy, honor, humility, happiness in what God gives, respect toward God, holiness, eloquence, quick to forgive one another, oneness of mind and endurance. The law of God. 1. Love. Love ye one another even as Christ loved you. 2. Faith. Have faith in the name of our Lord Jesus. 3. Hope. Have hope in God perpetually. The work of God. The work of God includes the hearing of the gospel 
and putting into practice what is preached. The preaching of the gospel right through to the world, being generous to the poor, the saints, the lame, the widow, the afflicted, the distressed, and the sick, hospitality to strangers and orphans. The work of God is to have faith in his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and to have love for one another. How to worship God, paying of tithe, free will offering, and charity. In all what God has given you, divide it into ten parts, and offer unto God one part out of the ten parts. This is what is meant by paying of tithe. Render thanks unto God on account of what he has done unto you, giving freely what you like unto God, praying all the time and singing his praises continually. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father.